Hey guys, I'm finally back with a new Godot tutorial, and this time we're actually in Godot 4 after struggling to make it work, but hey, it's finally working. And I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple 2D top-down controller, so without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So as always, I already have my test scene set up here which already has my top-down controller, which is the tank here. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to make in this video. Now, before we actually get started, I do wanna mention that there are quite a few differences between Godot 3 and Godot 4, which, some of, which I'm gonna be pointing out some of those differences in this video as we go and make the controller here. So let's actually get started. To get started, we wanna go ahead and add a new scene. And then in this case, we're going to be using a kinematic body. So we're going to do control A and we're going to search for kinematic body. But you notice that there isn't a kinematic body node anymore. And that's because in Godot 4, they renamed it to character body 2D. So now kinematic body is called character body 2D. So they actually renamed quite a few nodes, I believe. And made quite a few uh, syntax changes to GDScript, which I'm going to be pointing out here. But with our character body 2D added, let's go ahead and rename that before we forget to something like tank 2, since we already have our original tank. And we are getting a warning, and that's because we need to add a collision shape. But before we do that, we're going to add a sprite node 2D. That way we can actually see our tank. Now we, ha we can't actually see it yet because we need to assign the texture field of our sprite. So in this project, I already have some sprites here. So I'm just going to select my sprite and click and drag it into the empty field of the texture in the inspector. And now we can actually see our tank. Now I am going to be rotating it by 90 degrees so that it's facing the positive X directions. And to do that, I'm going to click E on my keyboard, which is a shortcut for rotation for the rotation tool. And then I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees, so that's pointing the positive X direction, like so. Now I'm going to select my tank again and add that collision shape so that we can get rid of that warning. So we're going to add a collision shape 2D. We're getting a warning on it, and that's because on the inspector, we need to assign a value to our shape. So click on empty and then click new rectangle shape 2D. We can then resize this collision shape to better fit our sprite. Now, it won't actually be able to fit our entire sprite. That's because we have our grid and snapping on. So for uh, momentarily, we're going to turn off the grid and then just uh, resize it accordingly. Now, you can press the O key on your keyboard on Windows. Uh, I don't know if the uh, key is different on Mac since I am in a Windows machine. And you can resize both sides. Uh, at the same time, if you don't do, if you don't hold Alt, then it will only resize one side. So you can click Alt and it resizes both sides. So that looks good to me. And yeah, we'll leave that as our collision shape and then select our tank once more. Do Control A and lastly, we're going to add a camera 2D. Now by default, it's already enabled and we're just going to leave the default properties. So that actually does it for the setup of our tank. Now we can actually add a script. So select the tank, click this script button here to add a new script. And we can go ahead and name it however we want. I'm just going to name it tank2 with a lowercase. And then click this folder icon to go ahead and save it in my tank folder. And click open. And now I am going to have the template be empty because I believe by default character body 2D basic movement is selected. Now that's basically for basic movement for games like platformers. So we don't want that in this case since we are making a top down game. So instead we're clicking object empty. Then simply click the create button to create the script. And let's actually get started with coding. So to start things off we're going to define an export variable and this is slightly different in Godot 4 so instead of just putting export like so we gotta put an export or at export um, and then var and then this is gonna be an export variable for our max speed 
So we're gonna call this max speed, like so. And I am going to specify the type uh, of this variable by doing colon equals and then 300. Now in Godot 4, you actually want to take uh, advantage of defining what type your variables are because there is a performance gain. Now uh, with that, uh, we decided to make our max speed an export variable. That way we can select our tank here and uh, change the speed uh, as uh, from <laughs> so that we can change the speed from our inspector easily uh, while testing our game. So. Uh, that's pretty much the Ernie variable we actually need to define because velocity is now actually built in into the character body. So we don't need to define a variable for our velocity anymore. That's already handled by the character body for us. So with that said, now we can start defining our physics process function. So func physics process delta float like so. And then inside here, we want to get our direction. So var direction is equal to our input dot get vector. So get vector is a built in method. And basically it gets an input vector by specifying four actions for the positive and negative X and Y axes. So it takes in a negative X, a positive X, negative Y and positive Y. And I believe it already returns the normalized value. So we don't have to normalize the vector. It's already handled for us. So like I said, we want to specify our negative action, which I already defined beforehand by going to project, project settings, input map and then defining the action here. So for example, I can define a new action by selecting this field here and, and naming that action. So in this case, for example, jump, clicking enter uh, to, or not this field, uh, this field here that says add new action. That was the filter by name. So on the add new action, you put the name of your action click jump and then press enter and that adds the action here and to actually assign a key you press this little plus button and then select the key that you want Godot will automatically detect which key you are pressing and then you press OK. In this case I don't need a jump action since it is a top-down game so I'm gonna remove it by clicking this remove action here and I can just close. So in my case the negative X direction is my move left action so that's the first parameter I'm gonna put here. So move left, followed by my positive X, which is move right, followed by my negative Y, which in this case is move up. And then my positive Y, which is move down. So that's how we get our uh, direction vector. Now to actually use this direction vector and make our character move, we wanna get the velocity, which like I said, is actually built in into the character body now. So we can just do velocity is equal to our direction times our max speed. And this will actually pretty much already uh, move our character. So that's pretty much all the code you need to move the character. So let's actually make sure that we save our tank scene in our tank folder. And let's go to our test level here. So we already have this tank here. So we're gonna delete that tank and we're gonna add a new tank by doing Control Shift A and then selecting our tank to scene here, moving it down. And then we can launch our scene by doing F6 or clicking this icon here. And as you can see, we have our tank scene here. And actually it's not moving because we forgot to actually call physics process in our script. So go back to your tank two script here and to get it to move, make sure that you call your move and slide function in your physics process. So make sure you cl uh, actually call move and slide. Now you don't actually do uh, need to do the velocity is equal to move and slide. You just have to call this now. You don't actually also have to pass a parameter to it anymore. Uh, move and slide just handles everything on its own now. So that's another slight difference uh, from Godot 3. Now with the move and slide uh, method being called, we can go ahead and test our test level here. 
And as you can see, we can already move. Now our player can't actually rotate. Uh, to rotate our player, you could uh, rotate it based off of your mouse position. And you can do that by doing uh, or by calling the look at function or method and then having it look at our mouse position by doing git global mouse position like so. So now if we go ahead and do that, it will rotate according to our mouse position like so. So if you want your uh, top down to behave like this, then that's pretty much all you need. But in my case, I'm actually going to have it uh, look in the direction that we're actually going towards. So if we're moving left, it's facing left. If we're moving right, it's facing right. If we're going up, it's facing up and so forth. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call a built in method. So this method I'm going to call is the dot angle method. So let me just do that uh, here real quick. So we're going to set our rotation is equal to our velocity dot angle. And let's actually move this before my movement slide. So that angle returns the vector's angle with respect to the positive x axis or one zero vector in radians. So this will automatically get the angle that our uh, sprite should be rotating towards. So as you can see, as I'm driving along, and as I change my direction that I'm driving in, our sprite rotates according to that direction. Now it is pretty abrupt change. So to smooth out that change, we can actually use something known as a steering behavior. Now I do want to give credit where credit is due. And I actually learned about steering behaviors from GD quest. So if you don't know about GD quest, definitely check them out. They make amazing content, but I did learn how to make steering behaviors from an old tutorial from them. So I do want to give credit to them um, since I did learn this from them. So to make use of a steering behavior, I'm going to define a couple variables at the very top. So we are going to define a variable for our desired velocity. So var desired velocity is equal or and we're going to make use of the uh, typing by doing colon equals because like I said, there is a performance gain and then vector two dot zero. So by default, it's going to be a vector of zero zero for our desired velocity. And then we also want one for our steering velocity. So var steering velocity colon equals vector two dot zero. So now we have these two new variables and to make use of them, we go in our physics process here. And then instead of doing velocity is equal to direction times speed, we're going to remove that line. And instead we're going to do desired velocity is equal to my direction times my max speed like so do i get in there if i put a colon no uh, yes i do since it's already being inferred up here what type it is all right so we don't need a colon there and then to get the steering velocity we do steering velocity is equal to our desired velocity minus our current velocity that we're moving at. And to actually get the smooth behavior that we want, we add our steering velocity to our current velocity. Uh, so we increment our steering velocity to our current velocity by doing steering velocity or plus equals steering velocity. Now we do want to multiply this by a value. So I'm actually going to define another variable. So in this case, I'm just going to multiply it by the variable. So we're going to call this variable drag factor. And that's actually define it up here. So we're going to use another export variable in this case again, and we're going to use an a range variable. So we're going to do at export 
underscore range and then parentheses zero comma ten comma and then zero point one so basically our zero is our min value uh, the 10 is our max value and then the 0 0.1 is the step so how by how much we can increment so this is going to give us a slider in our inspector that we can modify and then we actually need to make sure that it's a bar and then actually give it a name so drag factors what we called it and then colon equals 0 0.1 by default and let's add the zero here so 0 0.1 so if i select my tank 2 from my scene you will notice that we have now max speed and we have drag factor which we can actually adjust accordingly which is a slider so let's just set it back to 0.1 and with that it should actually be all we need so if i run my scene now and let's make it look bigger you will notice that our tank turns smoothly like so so there we go that's all you need and as you saw I can go beneath my trees because I didn't actually set the collision for that but yeah this is uh, all you pretty much need to make a top-down controller so hopefully you found the video useful and as always I'll see you guys in the next one until then have a wonderful day